Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia, if you're new here, and I post home decor and DIY content every Sunday. And so for today, we are gonna do three dollar store DIYs, but also I wanted to introduce you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've never heard of Squarespace, they are like the place you wanna go if you're interested in starting your own website. But we'll talk more about them a little bit later on. For now, let's go ahead and get into our first DIY project. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, this one's actually my favorite, and I really wanted to make some floor bases. You can already see what I'm doing in Dollar Tree, just messing with stuff. And Dollar Tree right now has really large pots that they carry during the springtime and in the summertime. It's a seasonal item for them. And you get these only for $1, which is such a good price. I really love these ones that I saw on West Elm, which inspired this DIY. I wish that the ones from Dollar Tree were a bit angular, but they're a little bit more rounded, which is okay. It still looks really good in the end, so you guys will see. But I ended up doing two variations, so you'll have to tell me down in the comments which one you like the best. So I decided to do two different heights, just like what I saw on West Elm's website. So I did two red and three green. So I did have to do one thing and I wanted to just drill a small little hole in each of the bottom of the pots because I wanted to be able to stick my pompous grass kind of all the way through and I didn't want to cut it. So that's why I ended up drilling a hole. Um, this I guess is optional if you just choose to leave it as more of like a sculptural element in the corner or you don't wanna put anything else in it, but because I did, I knew I needed a little hole there. So now that the holes were matched up correctly, um, it was time to add the adhesive. So I decided to do E6000 first, which is always the order you wanna do things in if you're gonna use both, because E6000 takes forever to dry, but it gives you such a strong hold. And when you're doing something like this, that's like flimsy, you want a strong hold on it. But hot glue will make it stick together very quickly, but over time, if you didn't use the E6000, I guarantee you this item in your home would not stand the test of time. So make sure you do that combination in that order and I think you'll have a lot more success. And then when it's time to place one pot on top of the other, I think it's easier to go with what is not glued to with what is glued and then make sure you're getting down at eye level so you're seeing how it's going to look head on so everything matches up just right because you don't want something that looks like, you know, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's supposed to be upright, just like what you would see in a store. So make sure you are being tedious during this time and because you only have so much time to work with that glue before it cures and you wanna make sure it's as straight as possible. So essentially we've kind of done like the top two pieces to this DIY, now it's time to do the bottom piece. So what I found is the easiest when you have just the slightest little ridge to work with. I don't like when I see like big globs of glue on projects. I think that that makes it look really DIY and not really finished. So what I like to do is take a brush. I just got this brush at the Dollar Tree and just um, brush on the adhesive and make sure you're taking your time on this step and then that way the glue is really only staying where it actually needs to be and not on the sides. So the green one was definitely the trickier of the two. We are just going to do the first step of the green one and apply it to the red one because it's gonna be our smaller base. And now with everything glued together, I think it's just easier to paint stuff when it's already built. Um, so the green one ends up being 22 inches tall and then the red one is just 14 inches tall, which is a pretty nice size for something that came from the Dollar Tree. So you guys already know, if you've been following me, you guessed it, these colors are just not gonna work for me, maybe for Christmas, but definitely not for right now. So I'm going in with my favorite black spray paint by Rust-Oleum in flat black, and I decided to do the one that was the easiest to glue in the flat black paint, and then the one that was harder to glue um, in the textured paint. So the red one became black, and then the green one is gonna be with a stone spray paint, which I'll show you guys in just a little bit. But take your time when you spray paint, there's no rush, Spray paint dries fast, so time is already on your side, so just don't rush this step because nobody wants drippies and um, it makes it look so much cleaner in the end when it's well done. I ended up doing three coats all together of the matte black paint on the red one, and I also finished it off with a clear poly acrylic spray paint as well. 
as for the green one, I knew that even though I was super careful that there was going to be the issue of seeing some of the adhesive, especially where the pots met. So I needed that to almost look like I did that on purpose. And a really easy thing that you can do is to use stone spray paint. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm taking just like a white primer flat white paint by Rust-Oleum. And I'm going to, just as I did the black one, I'm going to give this one three very even coats of that white paint. And as I mentioned earlier, I did go in with some stone spray paint to kind of disguise the adhesive that I could still see. And it gives it such a elevated texture. And I feel like you would never guess that this pot literally just was like three pots glued together from the Dollar Tree. When you see it all put together with the pompous grass, it really looks so incredible. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. You guys have heard me talk about Squarespace in the past and know that I am currently using it to launch my very own website in the future. Basically, if you've never heard of them before, they are a user-friendly online platform for starting your own website. So for me personally, I'm a cardiac nurse, but I'm also very pregnant and I have an almost two-year-old and I also have a side hustle here on YouTube as a content creator in the DIY home decor sector. So that is what I want my website to be about but I have no experience building websites. I think the last class I took was in high school, so it's been many years and Squarespace just makes it so easy. And on top of that, it's mobile friendly so I can work on it no matter where I am. But that's just my reasoning. If you have a different reason for needing to start your own website, head on over to squarespace.com so you can start your free trial. And then when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Garcia to use my coupon code Via Garcia to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. For the second DIY project, I wanted to make a sort of like iron sculptural element that you could put on a bookshelf or a coffee table or an entryway table. And all I'm really using, I actually don't know the name of this because my son ripped the tag off and I actually don't even know what it's for. I found it in the gardening section, so I'm assuming it's something for outside, and then I'm using a scrap piece of wood. The first thing I'm doing is I'm just finding the center of that scrap piece of wood because we are going to need to drill a hole in the middle of this wood so we can place our little sculptural piece. So after I was able to find the center of the wooden block, I needed to figure out how I was going to create kind of a dip in the wood because the diamond as you go up gets wider. So a hole straight through the middle of that wood wasn't really going to work. So I needed to use a smaller drill bit to kind of angularly dip a hole in this wood for it to sit upright. And I first just started off by making one small hole just to find my center point. And then I kind of went back and forth with that drill bit just to kind of make it a little bit more long than it would be wide. So you can see what I mean here. I kind of made it an oval shape so it would fit better. And then I am just going to apply the smallest amount of hot glue to the very tip of this diamond shape. And I'm going to place it directly in the center of the hole that we just made. You could totally use E6000 if that's your choice, but for a project like this, where it's not really something that people are going to be touching frequently, and it's more just to look at, then um, hot glue is perfect for this project. And because I really wanted it to have a more iron finish and not like a flat black finish, I decided to go in with some metallic black spray paint. And this is one of those things that when you spray paint, you just have to keep turning it and turning it and turning it because it seems like no matter how many times you turn it, there's a spot that you missed. So it took several coats of spray paint, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out.
for the last DIY project, I'm gonna share with you guys how I made this triptych art. Now there's three, but very soon to be four people in my family as I am like eight and a half months pregnant. So I thought, let's make some cool art for her nursery, but I wanted it to be kind of personalized. So you'll need three frames from the Dollar Tree, three mats from the Dollar Tree, and then also the canvases I had picked up from the thrift store, they came in like a huge pack and I got like such a good deal on them, but I know that they have canvases at the Dollar Tree as well. So um, the first thing I did was remove the canvases from the back and then I just needed to cut out a section to fit into the frames that we'll be placing these canvases into. But I didn't wanna use the canvas side. I really liked the linen-y texture on the back of the canvas instead, so that's the side that I ended up using. The reason I ended up taping them all kind of at the same length was because I wanted the top section of each painting to be this kind of linen-y material and then the bottom section to be white. And again, as we did in the first project, I'm using my same Apple Barrel white acrylic paint and I mix it with a little bit of gray and a little bit of beige just to make it not so pink tinged and I'm applying that right under the pencil line that I drew on each of the canvases. Obviously you can choose whatever colors work really well in your home, but the inspo picture that I found, I really wanted to try to replicate that as best as I could and theirs was all white. So um, I wanted to kind of take inspiration from that and just do the bottom half. But one thing happened and I had a feeling it was going to happen was that as I painted onto the canvas, it started to crinkle up a little bit and started to warp on me. But no worries, you can always flip it over and put your iron on a low setting and just make sure you slowly but carefully iron the other side. And you just wanna take your time on this. Don't, um, don't overdo it because you don't wanna burn the other side of the canvas, but definitely nobody wants wrinkles in their artwork, right? That's why normally it's stapled to the back of a wooden canvas. So um, just take your time and all of those wrinkles should get ironed out pretty easily. And instead of doing brush marks, I thought it would be so much cuter if we made it more personal since it's going in her nursery and we're the three people in her family. So I thought we each could do our fingerprints on the bottom half of this artwork. So I went first and then my husband did his. And then of course we had our son do one of his. Um, he was not really into it. So I ended up having to, <laughs> as you can see, I just got the one there. So um, I ended up having to take a brush for the rest of his, but at least we got one in, right? I mean, he's only 18 months old, so we gotta work with what we have. And after I was able to finish all of his throughout, I grabbed the mat and I wanted to make sure that I got his actual fingerprint in the mat, but if that's not a concern for you, just figure out where it's gonna look the best first and then I always trace around the mat so I know exactly where I need to cut off the excess. And after I was able to just trace that out, I just grabbed my scissors and cut that out and placed it on the back of the frame and just applied a little bit of tape to the top so it would stay put. And this is how our fingerprint triptych artwork turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I post home decor and DIY content every Sunday. And then also don't forget to check out the link in the description box below where you can find out all the details about squarespace.com slash Fia Garcia. I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next Sunday.